What I want to talk about is the imagination. Um, for me, and by what I'm learning, is fear slash anxiety. So as Eckhart Tolle says, it's you know under the umbrella of anxiety. Uh, fundamentally, it's fear, right? For that to exist, the imagination needs to be active. Without an imagination, we can't anticipate and we can't reflect. Fear, anxiety is an anticipatory state, right? We're anticipating something that might happen. Remove the imagination and that can't exist. All that exists is just sensation, right? Um, and that's why in the, I think it was the early 20th century, they were experimenting on addressing mental health issues by performing prefrontal lobotomies, um, which was the removal of certain parts of your uh, prefrontal lobe, which is where um, my understanding is the um, imagination sits, right? But obviously we need our imagination for lots of different things. So I would love you guys to take just a moment right now and ask yourself, do you live in your imagination? Meaning how active is your imagination when you're living out an experience, whether it's good or bad, whether you're feeling anxiety, whether you're feeling happiness, whatever it is, is your imagination driving the experience? Um, and, and a way to kind of assess that is, you know, when something happens, do you have dialogue, you know, and visions just that are either related or not related to your situation that are playing? For example, you know, I might be drinking a glass of water, but while I'm drinking the glass of water, I'm thinking about going for a surf and I'm imagining me riding a wave and that's what that, you know, that water triggered. So the question is, is when you're living out an experience, how active is your imagination when you're living it? So I want to, you know, reflect on my own personal um, revelations there is, you know, as a kid, just the act of reading books, reading books, the words, triggering the, the imagery in the mind, drawing. I was always really creative. So to be creative means, you know, having quite an active imagination, making music. So not necessarily just playing it. Uh, playing it doesn't really require much imagination, but creating music, making music does. Um, making up games when I was playing with my friends. I feel like even as a kid, when you're in school, you're encouraged to use your imagination by even not only to be creative, but to be thinking ahead, to be planning, you know, which, which leads us into quite often how we spend our, our, our time as adults, you know, that habit of planning, strategizing, anticipating, I mean, composing, I compose every single day. So I'm using my imagination, um, desire, desire relies on the imagination. I was managing all my bands, which also uses the tools of strategizing, anticipating, um, problem solving, imagination, imagination, relationships, desire, romantic gestures, confrontation, preparing for confrontation, ruminating on confrontation, everyday tasks. Even the simplest tasks for me, if I paid attention, there'd generally be some, a lot of imagery going on that's not necessarily related to the task that I'm doing. Now, that's not a problem if the imagination is, if the internal world is a good place. Now, as life happens and you start to experience, you know, tough times, right? And then bit by bit, you know, the more tough times you experience, or maybe you have one really big tough time, um, then it changes the scape of your internal world. The state of your internal world is going to fuel your imagination. So then all of a sudden, you know, when I'm going about my, you know, my daily routine and those tasks, I don't have positive imagery that's attached to that. I've got negative imagery. So when I'm strategizing, maybe I'm strategizing with these what ifs, these this um, catastrophizing and playing out the worst, you know, the, the, the worst case scenarios and ruminating confrontations. I'm reminding myself of, of the times that I, I felt, you know, my, my first panic attacks. It is, it's a PTSD orientated pattern. And so then you can understand that if you're living your life from your imagination, and then your imagination ends up a bad place, then, 
you know, you're missing out on all the good in the moment. How can you possibly feel good about yourself? How can you feel calm? How can you feel confident if you've got this negative imagery that is there, right? And to me, that explains why creatives, right, particularly people in the music industry or in the creative industries in general, are more susceptible to having problems with anxiety and depression. It's because their imaginations, our imaginations are so active, we work it every single day. And a lot of the times we're not aware that even when we don't need our imaginations, we're still using them. I realized how anxiety and depression is fueled by imagination, relies on the imagination, but it's not enough to be aware of that in the heat of the moment. That inspired me to look at how do I operate you know, throughout the day in general? Because I can't expect that for 70% of my waking day, I am literally walking around up here using my imagination. And then when it all turns to shit that I'm gonna know how to deal with it. So how do we live? <laughs> Even just the awareness of when your imagination is colorizing the moment can be an important thing. Jim Carrey calls it the, um, when he's time traveling. Um, he catches himself and goes, oh, all right, hang on, I'm time traveling here. That means you're anticipating what might happen in the future or you're reflecting on the past. You're out of the moment. You're not here, all right, you're somewhere else. Um, Dr. Martin L. Rossman, another doctor that I follow, is incredible. He calls it the runaway imagination. So even the awareness you know, just at that point before your lid is flipped, just ask yourself, is that happening now? Like where I'm feeling a certain way, right? What's my imagination doing? How active is my imagination right now? And you'll generally find that it's ridiculously active, right? Just the awareness of that can stop you from being swept up and, and you know, being identified with that world that you, your imagination has created. I like to set the habit of experiencing my moments through the senses. So I know that there's still a degree of imagination required, right? But the imagination, the mental activity level is much, much lower if you're focusing on the sensations in their, in their fundamental state, right? So when I'm here and I'm talking to you, you know, I could be boom, off in my head and imagining this and being triggered and, and then that'll trigger this vision and blah, 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 blah. Or I can take a breath and I can feel my body. I can put my awareness on my body, right? And start by focusing on the breath. So the breath, right? Just focusing on that. And each time the mind tries to, you know, play a vision or whatever, you just bring it back to the breath. What else have we got to focus on? We've got to focus on what we're feeling on the skin, right? whether it's a breeze, whether we're feeling cold, whether we're feeling hot, what I'm looking at, what am I seeing? The light and shades right? of, of all the objects that are in front of me, right? Um, what am I hearing? Really paying attention to what am I actually hearing? Not the meaning of what I'm hearing or the meanings behind what I'm seeing, but just taking it, experiencing it just as it is, right? So getting in touch with the senses. Now, when I was really having troubles with anxiety, I understood that it's the way in which I live out my day that's gonna affect my mental health. So I set the intentions of just choosing all right, when do I need my imagination? Think of it more as a tool, right? And go, all right, well, when I'm writing my music, I need my imagination, cool. When I'm going for a walk, no, I don't need my imagination, right? When I am strategizing or planning, I need my imagination. So I had to get this little list, right, of times when I am going to be purposefully activating my imagination and then other times when it doesn't need to be active now i'm not saying wrestle with it or resist it or demonize it or anything like that i'm just suggesting that to choose a different way of of experiencing a moment so when i'm going for my walk naturally you know i don't have the distractions of tasks and you know it's not very mentally stimulating 
So my mind will generally spin. Go, all right, well, fuck, this is boring. Let's go somewhere else. <laughs> all right, well, how do I experience the moment when I'm going for a walk? I'm feel, how does it feel, the ground feel, you know, under my feet? How does the air feel? What am I smelling? What am I seeing? What am I hearing? And just focus on that information. And the, the mind, especially if you're creative, will spin out and we'll, we'll, we'll try to pull you out of the moment, but it's the act of bringing yourself back. Um, so that began to be my habit. So when I'm brushing my teeth, when I'm going to the toilet, when I'm going for a walk, when I'm exercising here um, in the garage, when, when I'm talking to somebody, is just get in connected with my senses as a whole. And then when I write music, then imagination time. When I'm planning, imagination time. And I just found that with time, the more I kept bringing myself back and also catching when my imagination would start to run away, I just found I was less anxious. It also improved my sleep because the, 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 how would I know how to reel in my imagination when it, at the end of a day when it's been, you know, running a million miles an hour, it's had no breaks, even on my breaks I'm imagining, and then I could think that I can just put my head on the pillow and switch off? No way. That's a skill. That's a skill that has to be practiced. So the point is, um, on the overall, to sum it up, is I would love you guys to do a bit of self-inquiry and think, does your imagination colorize your experience? And if it colorizes your experience, how much does it colorize your experience? It might be okay if your imagination is a good place and you've got that positive thinking you know, thing go down pat, but when the, when the mind has been corrupted by bad experiences and you've been shaken up, if you're living from your head up here, right, imagination, you're gonna have problems. So becoming more conscious as to when and how you use your imagination and getting in touch with the present moment using your senses has been a really fantastic way for me to uh, improve my mental health. Mm -hmm.